Hello guys and welcome to my new video and today we'll be looking at healers and how each of the healing spec is comparable or how it deals with Grievous. So this is one of the questions that, have been, that I have been asked a lot. How do we deal with Grievous? Because Grievous is a very punishing or a healer affix and it requires a lot of healing. It requires sometimes a different talent set up, it requires a different mentality. Because in order to prepare for Grievous, you will notice that a lot of groups will be looking for specific healers for re extremely high keys. They'll be looking for specific healers because there are healers who are better than other healers when dealing with a specific affix. Now, in this video, I will be comparing healers in Pog environments. So I won't be talking about the, you know, the 18, 19 plus 20 keys with an optimal group with optimal setup where players play really really well avoid a lot of damage and things like that i'll be looking at your generic average pog where the tank might not be optimal the dps might not be optimal people will step into stuff and things like that so this is not going to be the min maxing guide or a video it's going to be looking at your average players because i feel this will provide the best overview for new healers or new players coming in and they're thinking like which healer is going to be good at grievous and things like that so overall, I have tested Grievous on all my healers. I have all of the healing classes and the item levels do range between somewhere 388 for my Mistweaver Monk and 375 for my Resto Shaman. So there is an item level differentiation here, but I will try to provide a decent overview and decent judgment of which healers felt easier than others. So first of all, when dealing with grievous weeks, you have to consider different mentality. First of all, your DPS is going to be lower as a healer. For healers who enjoy doing DPS in the downtime, it's going to be lower straight away because a lot of your global coolants are going to be spent in healing the group. So all of a sudden your talent choice might, might reflect that. To a certain extent, maybe for Resto Jude, you'll be using germination instead of photosynthesis because you feel like, I'm just gonna place all of those rejuves my DPS is going to be lower anyways because I need to make sure, and that's a key here, when dealing with Grievous, you want to get rid of the stacks as soon as possible. You don't want it to go to 4. Again, the stacks have been changed to 4 max. You don't want that to happen because the longer you let it go on, the harder it's going to be for you to get, get them to full HP. So you kind of want to maintain the group's HP at 100% at all times. You have to play extra, extra safe. Uh, another thing that you need to consider is that some of the bosses that you would think were extremely easy before, now they become a lot harder because all the sudden bosses like in uh, Mother Lord, the first boss, which knocks you off and does a lot of AoE damage to everybody, you can't go back and DPS the boss. You have to make sure or prepare for this AoE. You need to get your heals out. You need to maybe have some cooldowns to the same extent as the Underwrought second boss when it charges and starts doing, starts getting all these little worms out and the AoE happens, everyone dips to like 10, 20% HP. Grievous starts stacking up, so you need to be ready. So all the sudden bosses that felt easier other weeks can be substantially harder this week as a healer. And of course, mana consumption is going to be increased significantly. I would almost recommend every healer out there to get those sugar crusted fish feasts where you can really generate your mana much, much faster and it'll eliminate or at least minimize the downtime you spend on mana consumption really really highly recommended so the testing that i did overall the general consensus is that every healer is capable of doing enough aoe healing to keep everyone top top group healing is not an issue for majority of healers i mean rest of shaman to an extent if everyone has to be stacked or if everyone has to be spread out at all times and there's constant aoe healing there can't be issues for a so shaman, but the thing is, there's not a lot of fights in BFA Mythic Plus that requires you to be constantly spread out, and there's a lot of AoE damage. There really isn't that many, so Resto Shaman did feel quite strong in terms of AoE healing because of the chain heal boost, because of the high tide changes. But overall, every healer was able to provide, like, you know, a DPS dips to 10%, they have four stacks of Grievous. Every healer is capable of getting that DPS player to full HP with not that many issues. The problem in my opinion, is when the tank needs constant single target healing. So a tank average 250k HP, let's say, 250k HP, that tank is getting constantly hit, Grievous keeps stacking on the tank, and certain classes, a lot of the classes, don't have good enough single target healing to top them up. 
So all of a sudden you're playing this catch-up game where you're trying to top up the tank, you're trying your best to get the grievous stacks off them, and at the same time there might be some AoE damage happening from the mobs or the boss, and other players start getting grievous stacks. But you're still constantly trying to get the tank topped up, and all of a sudden you're lost. Everyone's at four stacks, everyone's going really, really low, and this can happen to quite a few classes. Now, this can be eliminated by having something like a blood decay tank who's extremely good or a tank who is kiting more. But again, this is a video based from my experiences while pugging. You're not going to get, you know, the best tanks in the world. Let's have a scenario where there's going to be more of average play. More mistakes are going to be made. So that was definitely an issue for a lot of the classes. So when I go to my ranking, I'm going to rank healing specs in terms of in, ter in terms of tiers, the best and then it's going to be the, the rest, the best and the rest. So it's no surprise that from my, at least from my testing, the healers that provide really strong single target healing would probably have the least amount of issues because let's say a tank is at 10% HP for Grievous stacks. Things like a Mistweaver Monk will have no issues to actually bring them up to full HP because Mistweaver Monks have an extremely st strong single target to an extent that their single target can really carry Grievous healing weeks. Now, the big disadvantage to Mistweaver Monk crazy burst healing is their mana consumption. In my testing, or at least in my opinion, I feel Mistweaver Monks suffer from mana or mana issues the most out of every healer out there. They can really, really burn through all of their mana depending on how many grievous stacks there are, depending on how much the tank is taking damage, depending on how often you're spamming vivify. So at the cost of the best single target healing in the game, you have the mana consumption. So you have to consider that. But overall, you can really carry grievous healing as a misweaver monk. Another healer that I felt was extremely strong in terms of single target healing and in terms of the healing that they provide was a Restoration Druid. Now, a Resto Druid type of healing is different. They don't really have that many burst healing abilities outside of Swiftman. And I end up holding on to Swiftman quite a lot, waiting for that oh crap moment where a person has four stacks and things like that. But the core of their healing is coming from having as many mastery or as many hots on a single person as possible. So if you have things like Scenario Ward on your tank, if you have multiple if you have rejuvenation, if you have, you know, the spring blossoms buff, if you have regrowth buff on them, all of these hots are going to stack up and all of a sudden casting like a swiftman on them is going to do a massive amount of healing. Overall, I felt that if you have a decent tank, if you have multiple hots on them, those hots are good enough to keep the tank at, you know, at reasonable levels where Grievous might not stack or if it does stack, the hots will be strong enough to bring them to full HP or at least to bring them outside of the threshold of Grievous. So it felt quite good. Now I mentioned before, if you are really struggling, Germination can actually be a decent choice as well. But Resto Jutes were definitely a good healer for Grievous, especially if you can get those mastery stacks. If you have your Swiftman Azerite trait, which every time you Swiftman is going to add an additional hot that's gonna work with mastery. Stacking mastery, having as many hots on players is the name of the game for Resto Jutes on Grievous weeks. Now let's go to the mid tier or the rest of the healers. And this list basically consists of healers who are great at AoE healing, but might suffer from that single target healing. And this is the main reason, or this is the biggest issue that I saw when dealing with Grievous. Like I mentioned before, you can really fall into this trap of trying to get the tank topped up while everyone else is falling below, and then you're kind of lost. So Holy Priest, I was playing Holy Priest this week, and Holy Priest did feel pretty nice, pretty good. Holy World Serenity was extremely important for the people who don't know what that is, that's like a very strong single target heal, which cooldown gets reduced based on other spells that you use. So having this spell as, as a backup for like that single target or tank healing was extremely important. But overall, I felt Holy Priest provided very good AoE healing, but the single target healing could be somewhat lackluster when compared to Miss Vivo or Resto Druid. Now, if you look at Holy Paladin, again, Holy Paladin Beacon of Virtue is extremely, extremely great for AoE healing, especially on Grievous Weeks, but it felt very RNG to some ex extent. So, for example, if you use Beacon of Virtue and then you follow it with Holy Shock and you follow it with Flash of Light, if they don't crit, there's going to be somewhat of issues topping up the group. 
especially if the tank is taking a lot of single target damage and i don't feel holy paladin's single target healing is really that great if holy shock doesn't crit holy shock when holy shock crits it gives you the infusion of light proc it makes your fl uh, flash of light or holy light flash of light stronger holy light quicker so crit is definitely a big portion of providing a lot of healing and on top of that wings or avenging wrath is an extremely strong cooldown to an extent that I was holding on to it a lot of the times when compared to previous weeks when I would use it on cooldown to try giving myself extra DPS and I would look better on DPS meters but on previous weeks I was holding on to this cooldown in case everyone was dipping really low Grievous was stacking up I would pop my wings I would pop my beacon of virtue and then my holy shock uh, flash a light everyone's full HP everything's perfect so holding on to cooldowns was very important as my as a holy paladin for Grievous which felt pretty bad because I like to use it constantly. But overall, quite RNG and the single target healing is very dependent on crit, in my opinion. Now we're talking about Resto Shamans and Resto Shamans have received a lot of bad or negative feedback towards Feynman healing, towards uh, Grievous healing as well because of how their mastery works, because mastery requires the person to be quite low. I feel mastery is kind of like a double-edged sword kind of deal. Um, because of Grievous, you want to make sure everyone's at full HP at all times so it doesn't stack up, but at the same time, and Mastery is not really gonna help you with that at all, but if you do fall behind and someone's really, really low, Mastery will help you bring that person from like 10% HP to full HP. So it can work both ways, but overall I felt that the changes to Chain Heal, the changes to High Tide, I was experimenting with different kind of talent builds. A lot of the talent builds are completely viable for Resto Shaman in 5 months depending on what you need. Uh, so the AoE healing, especially if you can get those Chain Heal bounces, felt really strong. It, I did not have many issues with keeping up the group at full HP. Now the problem again lied with tank healing. Even with Earth Shield, I felt that if the tank is taking constant damage, I will have issues trying to keep them up above the grievous threshold so again in some instances i felt like i was falling behind and the single target healing was definitely not as good as the aoe healing so i hope that maybe urchil would get buffed or something like that but overall resto shaman fell in the same kind of issues as the other healers mentioned in this section pretty good or really good aoe healing the single target is kind of falling behind and you need to rely on your tank in a lot of the cases and of course, the last spec that I'm going to cover is going to be a Discipline Priest. Now, Discipline Priest has been a relatively hard healer to heal with on Grievous Weeks, especially in a poke scenarios where there might be some unexpected AoE damage, where people might not be kiting, especially a tank. This priest always relied heavily on their tank. They usually run with things like a Blood Decay or maybe a Brewmaster who can mitigate a lot of the damage. Overall, with patch 8.1, they did receive some of the new Azerite changes to things like Depth of the Shadows, making your single target healing a bit stronger depending on how much damage your Shadow or Pain was doing, and then increasing Atonement duration by 2 seconds. So, the single target healing is highly, highly dependent on your tank. Overall, if I were to talk about Discipline Priest healing for new players coming into Grievous Weeks, is that you're going to be trying a lot harder. You're going to be using a different talent build, a safe talent build for Discipline Priest, and that it will include Twist of Fate, and that will probably include Shadow Covenant, which kind of means you will be using, or you'll be def healing defensively much more. And by defensively, I mean you'll probably be using maybe Penances on, on friendly targets. You might be using Shadow Men much more on the group, Shadow Covenant on the group. And your DPS will suffer from that because you won't have Schism, you won't have Sins of the Many and things like that. So overall, you'll be kind of coming into this more healing build rather than DPS build. And you kind of lost the core essence of what this priest is all about. And that is like dealing a lot of damage. Now, this is for the poke scenarios. You can still get away with using Schism and Sins of the Many as a, as a this priest in organized groups at high mythic close. If you're a new discipline priest or if you're someone who's struggling to keep people alive as a discipline priest why not switch over or try holy holy requires a lot less effort in my opinion it's a lot simpler healing in five man dungeons but this priest dps on grievous weeks if you go with the safe build is going to be a lot lower anyways so why not try a simpler build that's going to provide most likely a similar type of dps because you'll be defensively healing more anyways and it'll be a lot easier in my opinion a lot easier to play with so give it a try if you're struggling as a this priest in grievous try holy and see how that goes because i felt holy priests were pretty decent 
alternative to discipline. So this has been my overall overview of healing specs when compared to grievous healing. Of course, like I mentioned like a mention hundred times in this video, this is based for poke scenarios, for suboptimal setups. You can't control the setup that you're going to get. You can't control the people that you're going to in, they're going to be in your party. So keep that in mind. A lot of the healers or most of the healers here are completely viable at really high mythic plus keys. I would love to hear your opinions on this. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll talk to you in my next guide.